Well, size does matter, and in this case, it's the length of the box which is impressive. As you can see, it is in red and black colours, and that means it's a Mammut model. And it's named as a Mammut AC700 ballast trailer. Going to the underneath of the box, we can see that the model is made by IMC, and it's model number 410288. Let's weigh it up. It flies onto the weigh bridge as if by magic, and it weighs three pounds fourteen ounces, and that is one point seven six kilograms. The packaging consists of a sleeve which covers a shoebox style box, and we can see the IMC slogan: "Enjoy the little things," and that's what I always tell my wife. Anyway, let's lift the lid and see what's inside. Out comes the usual Mammut collector card, which we'll take a quick look at soon. And you can see that the individual packaging is high quality. But nonetheless, international shipping can be a challenge. And there was one loose part in the box. That was the loader arm, which had become detached. But it was an easy fix to glue it back on. Here is the Mammut collector card, and you can see that 500 of the models have been made. First up, the model comes with a choice of fifth wheels, so you could fit a different maker's trailer if you wanted. It also comes with a model driver bloke, and the only guarantee is that he spends his time just sitting around. If you want, you can open the cab door, and then carefully encourage him to get into the cab. And here we can see him being just slightly reluctant to get in. But there's no escape, and he has to end up doing his job. Next we can connect up the tractor and trailer, and clunk click does the job. One other thing to fit is this slightly odd ladder with a huge ring at one end, and we can fit that onto the trailer in a transport position. Let's weigh it up again. So here it is onto the weigh bridge, and it comes in at just under two pounds. And that is 895 gramlets. Starting underneath, and it's a typically detailed IMC chassis in a 6x4 configuration. The underside of the engine and gearbox is modelled together with the transmission through to the rear axles. A very nice touch is that there's a limited edition number plate fixed in the wheel arch. The cab has got beacon lights and lights on the roof, and there are also air horns on the sides. But one thing that is odd about the model is that it's been badged as an Actros, when it's supposed to be an Aerox. There are nice graphics on the side, but the Mammut name is slightly misaligned across the door. It does have the Mammut fleet number, and the wheels look very smart. Behind the front wheel there are tanks with highlighted filler caps, and you can see various textured surfaces. The wheel arches and rear wheels look the part. At the back you can see branded rigid mud flaps, and there's a realistic license plate. Behind the cab there are decent looking cabinets, and a set of coiled lines above, but it's the textured surfaces that catch the eye. Moving to the trailer and it's branded as a Notaboom, and there's some good looking detail around the kingpin. The rest of the model is at a fairly simple level, with the modelling more functionally based. At the front of the trailer there's no obvious connections for the airlines. But the containerized office does have a fleet number and sharp graphics. The detailing along the edge of the trailer is also very good. Up on the roof we have what looks like solar panels. At the rear of the container there is a door indicated within the casting, and there's also a grab rail. There are more detailed components behind the gooseneck, and this trailer consists of a tray mounted on top of the flat deck. Some of the small graphics detailing is of a very high standard. The model also includes a loader crane, 
but perhaps the silver rivets would have looked better painted. The end of the loader arm has a tiny hook fitted. And you can see various parts of the power pack for the loader arm also modelled. The edge of the trailer has a yellow stripe applied and more tiny graphics. And if we go to the rear of the trailer, the details look convincing. Starting with the Arox and the wheels spin freely and you can get a very good steering angle. Out on the Cranes Etc test track the Arox rolls well enough with the plus point being the steering angle which is very very good. Moving to the trailer and there is proportional steering and that works well. But the simplified axles don't have any form of suspension. There are plastic landing legs which just pull down, but they're quite simple and won't hold any load. Back out on the test track and the trailer rolls reasonably well. And if we set the proportional steering, the trailer does trace a nice angle. And the whole model as a set does have convincing steering. This model is designed as a partner to a DMAG AC650 or 700 mobile crane. And the special tray on the trailer deck is designed to carry some crane parts. So here let's add on the counterweight tray. And for good measure we'll just stick on a couple of counterweight blocks also. At the back of the trailer there's a special space designed to carry the spreader plates. And fully loaded it is a convincing partner to a DMAG crane. Another bit of functionality to test is the ladder that's on the side of the trailer and you can rotate it about its connecting point and then position it to provide access to the trailer deck. The loader arm also has functionality. You can unpack it from its transport position and then rotate it completely and it also has an extendable end section. It won't hold any load, but still you can get some interesting poses. This is a nice partner model to a DMAG AC650 or AC700 mobile crane. There is some very nice detailing overall, although there are some areas where the detailing is more simple. The specific nature of the trailer does allow some interesting poses with the mobile crane. So overall if you want to add another heavy haulage model to your Mammut fleet, then this model has enough to be rated as very good. Thank you. 